Hosea 10.2 Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. Divided hearts. The year was approximately 1999 uh, to 2000. I believe it was 2000, early 2000. At that point in time, I was a young kid, 17, turning to 18 years old. Um, I was very rebellious in my youth. I was a very rebellious kid. To the point that my dad left to Puerto Rico and left me in Florida at the age of uh, 16, 17 with a family member because he didn't want to deal with me anymore at that point in time. But I wanted to change my life. I got into some trouble here in, in, in Florida at that point in time. Because I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. My dad had moved to Orlando and back and forth. And I remember that I, I went ahead and went back to Puerto Rico. Um, it was a life or death situation for me. I had to go. I had to um, try to change my life. And my father is a very godly man. My father is a, a praying man. He gets up every single morning at 4 or 5 in the morning and prays for several hours. That is just who he is. He is a, a praying man. He is a man of prayer. He is a man of... Um, awesome awesome man of God and he started instructing me in the way of Jesus Christ because he always raised me in the Lord it's just I strayed away consistently I remember that I was in a point in time where I was going to church with him I was um, reading my scriptures every single day I was doing all of the right things I, I, I dropped all of the bad friends I um I was already baptized um, I mean I, I did a lot of different steps at that age um, and I felt the power of the living God. It was an amazing, beautiful thing what God had done for me at that age. And then I sort of blew it. The time came when I turned 18 years old and I wanted to live a rebellious life a little bit because you know how when you're tempted to do certain things and you want to go back and you're walking in Jesus Christ and but you got your buddies, you got your friends, you got your peoples, you got women, you got different people calling upon you left, right, up, down, and you don't know what to do when you're young. And I remember that I decided to come back to Orlando, Florida. And um, I remember when I got to the airport, I had several people picking me up at the airport. These were moments of a lot of conviction because I had already had the Spirit of God in me, in my humble opinion, now that I'm older, I know it was the Spirit of God convicting me. Every single second that I was doing the wrong thing, my heart was divided. Every single second that I was in that vehicle, with individuals that were using marijuana, with the windows rolled up, doing things that were inappropriate. And these are not things that I say happily, proudly, or boastfully. But it's important for you to realize that I too have fallen short. I too have fallen short. I remember during that week that I took the trip back to Orlando that I found myself in a situation where my boys had to, my boys had to visit a park for a drug transaction and um, they took me with them. And when I went with them to that drug deal, let's just say that it was a drug deal um, gone the wrong route. It went very sour, very, very sour. I literally could have died, literally could have died, but through every single second, I felt the conviction of this Holy Spirit of God, get out of there, run, go, run, and don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that I heard the audible voice of God saying, run, Tally, run, that's not what I'm saying, but you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at you. 
and in your spirit speaking to you. And I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. No matter how far I strayed at that point in time, whether it was in fights in a club or in a drug deal that could have gone bad, God was working in me. God was calling me out of that lifestyle. God was calling me out of that life. And I knew, I knew very well that if I would have passed on at that point in time, I would have gone to hell. I know a lot of people don't want to talk about hell. It's almost as if hell is a forbidden word in the church. Oh, no, no, don't, don't mention hell. Some people try to pretty hell up for you. Oh, you're just going to sleep. Yeah, you're just going to take a little nice nappy. No, 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 no. Hell is serious business, and I was headed to hell. It wasn't until 2002 that I got serious about this walk in Jesus Christ and, and started realizing that the Holy Spirit was truly, truly working in me, protecting me, guarding me when I was in the streets. I was a wannabe gangster. That's what you are. I wasn't no gangster. I was a wannabe gangster with the wrong friends at the wrong time. But once I came to Jesus Christ, and once he delivered me and set me free, and once he transformed my life, how can I forget what he has done in Luke 17, 11 through 19, we see, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the myths of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood far off. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. very similar to when we come to God and we cry upon God and we say Jesus have mercy upon my life Lord because many of us that come to Jesus Christ I don't know about you but my past isn't pretty and you've cried upon Jesus and you've asked him to deliver you and you've asked him to set you free. Oh, how many times. And when he saw them, he said to them, Jesus said to them, Go shew yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. You have to understand that these were men who were lepers. This was serious business. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, this is a very deep question here, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. God had delivered ten lepers, and only one remembered. Only one remembered. Oh, how hard it is. Oh, how hard it is. When the bride of Christ forgets that first love, that first love, Oh, you may walk around your life normally. You may even throw a couple of hallelujahs every now and then. But that first love is gone. Very similar to a marriage. You go about your way, you work your Monday through Friday. 
You live your commitments and honor. But where is the love? Where is the love? Do you know that my wife has saved every single love letter that I have written her? Every single one of them. And it's important to sometimes go back and see that. And remember that first love. Oh, the beautiful moments. Come on, family. The Word of God tells you in Psalms 50, 22. There are very deep consequences in forgetting God. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. If you came to this channel thinking that you're going to get the Joel Osteen fluffy pancakes and this and that, you're not going to get it. This is Bible. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Do you remember those days when you were in bondage? Do you remember those days? Do you remember those days when you were in a position that your heart, your heart was full of bondage? Well, alcoholism, depression, anxiety, suicidal tendencies, divorces, anger problems, jealousy, drug addictions, drug dealing, those were moments of bondage. Those were moments when God rescued you, when no one wanted to touch you. When Jesus came to my life. Oh, my family in Jesus. When Jesus came to my life. I was a broken man. I was a broken man. The world couldn't save me. My works could not save me. I was bankrupt. Egypt had destroyed me. The bondages of Egypt had destroyed me. And God reminds us, don't forget. But boy, are we a rebellious people. In Acts 7.39, To whom our fathers would not obey. But trust him from them. And in their hearts turn back again into Egypt. We have a very bad heart problem, church. We have a very bad heart problem, church. I make this because of so many of you who write me every day. Every single day. I know what your struggles are like. I know how hard this walk is. My family in Jesus Christ, I plead with you today. I plead with you with all of my Puerto Rican heart. God wants you back home. And in the process of you coming back home, He's going to restore you. He's going to renew you. In Ezekiel eleven nineteen, he's going to give you one heart. And he's going to give you a new spirit. And he's going to take out that stony heart that Egypt has once again placed inside of you. And he'll give you a new heart of flesh. But my family, it starts right now not about a magical little prayer that you can repeat and everything's going to be okay. I'm asking you humbly as your brother, believe the gospel. Believe in Jesus. Believe he's the only way. He is the only way. And repent. If you're in a position that you've turned away from God and you have forgotten about God, just as I in my youth strayed away from God, 
found myself in life and death situations. I want us today, me and you, if you have your family around you, there are many of you who view these as Bible studies in your house with your families. Let us take a minute or so to worship God together. Not as the pagans that are just repeating babblings. No, 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 no. Not for a spectacle for people to see us. No, 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 no. But in spirit and in truth. Those who worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. Dear beautiful, beautiful Heavenly Father, we love you so much. Oh, Jesus. When our family has abandoned us, Lord. When our uncles and aunts, mothers and fathers. When our brothers, sisters, neighbors and great grandfathers. When they've all abandoned us. You were there. For the many children who grew up without a father, who grew up without a mother. He was there. And when we've come to you, Heavenly Father, you've become our dad. You've become our mother, our father, our auntie, our brother. You are an amazing God. You have been so good to us, Lord. You have been so good to us, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I remember when we were first falling in love with you, Lord. We didn't know nothing about no Illuminati. We didn't know nothing about no secret societies. We didn't know nothing about this, but we knew you. We knew you. And that was more than sufficient. And now that the years pass, we know so much knowledge. But we have forgotten, Heavenly Father, of you, of the first love. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Jesus, we love you. We're sorry for not obeying you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we're sorry for straying away constantly, Lord. We're sorry. We need you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We need you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I'm feeling the presence of God. Hallelujah. This is the air Hallelujah. Jeremiah 3.22. Hallelujah. This is the air Return ye backsliding children. And I will heal your backslidings. Behold we come unto thee. For thou art the Lord our God. Let us come closer to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm sitting here drenched in tears. Not sadness. Feeling the presence of God. My family, there's nothing like it. We have strayed far away as a church. We have strayed far away as a church. But Jesus is able to restore you today, to restore me today. And his precious, beautiful son, Jesus Christ. He loves you. Let us come boldly before his throne in repentance, church. I love you. I care for you. 
I know that when I preach the gospel and I mention certain people that are doing some things that are not appropriate, you may get offended. But understand that I love you and that I want to warn you and that I want to ensure that you're in a position that I get to see you in his kingdom. That we get to see each other in the kingdom. Let us walk in holiness, church. Walk in holiness. Let us obey his commandments. I don't know why that offends the church so much. Let us walk in his ways. For he loves you. Next weekend, I might be taking the weekend off. As it is my daughter's birthday. And we're going to see if we can do it the other Sunday. And, uh. Have a good day with my daughter. Amen. I do have a, a video coming up on questions and answers that people always ask me. In regards to my life, in regards to what I do for employment, different questions like that. If you have any questions that you want to ask me, feel free to ask in the comment section. And I'll try to get to most of them on the video. I love you guys very much. I genuinely do. And... um Thank you for passing by each week. I mean that. God bless you.